All right, you guys, today we are taking on the law of signs. So the trigonometric ratios that we've covered so far, they relate to right triangles. So we think of that as when we're using our basic trigonometry. which we think of as our so ka toa Okay, and the beauty of the law of signs is that it's a theorem that applies to all triangles, but we really derive these relationships from our knowledge of those right triangles using basic trigonometry. All right, so again, Law of Sines is a theorem that applies to all triangles, not just right triangles. So here I'm giving you a visual where I'm calling it triangle ABC, ABC, and the sides opposite, so opposite angle A is side A, opposite angle B is side B, opposite angle C is side C. So we want to always think about the angles with the sides opposite. So what we want to do is we want to look at sine A over the side opposite. That ratio will be the same as, so right here, sine B to its side opposite, that little lowercase b, and then sine C and then its side opposite right here. So we end up having this new relationship where we have sine angle with its side opposite is equivalent to all of the other sine angles with their sides opposite. So really what we wanna do is we wanna build a proportion using any two of these ratios. Let me write that down. So build a proportion using any two of these ratios. Okay, so when is it appropriate to use the law of science? Well, there's two cases. So you can use the law of sines to solve a triangle. So when we say solve for a triangle, we're saying find all of its missing parts, angles and sides. So you can use the law of sines to solve a triangle if you are given the measure of two angles and one side. So here, this would be an example of angle, angle, side. Here we have two angles and the non-included side marked. Or we could have angle, side, angle, where here we have two angles and the included side. So in both of these cases, we're going to be able to solve for a missing side. So let me add that language here. So solve for a missing side. Okay. So again, whenever I'm using the law of sines, I need an angle with a side opposite. So if you look at the angle that's marked here, 50 degrees, I have a side opposite. That's gonna give me a ratio to build off of. Now right here, I have an angle. This would be the side opposite. This would be the one that I'm able to solve for initially. So again, if I'm building a proportion using the law of sines, I need an angle with a side opposite. So angle, side opposite. This angle, I can solve for this side that is opposite. Okay, in my second case, well, I actually don't have an angle with the side opposite, right? If I look at the only side that's marked where 14 is, I actually don't have the angle that's opposite, but I know that I can solve for it. If I have a triangle that has two angles marked, I can always solve for that third angle first. Let me make a note of that. 
So here we can always solve for the third angle in any triangle. So in this instance, is this is 50 and this is 60, that's 110 degrees. Well, this would have to be 70. So now I do have an angle with a side opposite. So I could either solve for this missing side or this missing side. I actually have options here. I'm going to be consistent and just put the X right here so it's similar to my diagram over here. But again, I technically could have solved for either one. So when I'm using the law of sines, again, I need an angle with a side opposite. All right, so here in number two, we can also have two sides and an angle that is opposite one of the sides. And here I'm giving a little note that says, beware of the ambiguous case. Another way that I could have phrased this, so an angle that is opposite one of the sides, is I really need a non-included angle. All right, so this ends up being side side angle, side side angle. So let me give you an example. Let's say that I label this as 45 degrees, this as six and this as eight. Okay, and in this case, we would be solving for a missing angle. So solve for a missing angle. All right, so if my picture had this much marked, right, I have an angle here that's 45, and I have these two sides right here, but I don't have their included angle. Where the 45 is, it's a non-included angle, right? That's why that's side-side angle. So what I want to remind you of for a moment is what happens when we have side-side angle. So I'm just pulling this from an earlier lecture, right? We saw it last semester. We saw it this semester as well. So if we have two sides in the non-included angle of a triangle uh, congruent to two sides in the non-included angle of another triangle, the triangles are not necessarily congruent. They also would not be similar. So we saw it for congruence and it translates to similarity as well. They will not have the same um, shape or size necessarily. So let me remind you of why. So here in my diagram, I'm showing you that these two sides are the same as these two sides, right? So let's block this one out of view for a moment and just look at this triangle on the left. So here, since I don't have the included angle, right? I would need the one right where B is right there. Here I see that, well, this side BC could be in two very different positions. We could even show that with a compass. So here is my side BC right here, right? It's set in stone. Since I don't have the angle right there, right? We know that this side could swing into an alternate position over here. I'm just using my compass and that's what that little arc is doing. It's showing how it would overshoot the triangle then it would finally connect right there. So there's two very different looking triangles that would result with the same information. So my example, I'm showing it for congruence, but it also doesn't work for similarity. So right where that hinge is, that's where the B is. That's where it's right in between the two marked sides, right? There's a hinge right there so that BC can swing into two very different locations. So if I apply that to my model right here, right here, this would be my hinge. So this side right here where sixes could swing potentially into a second location right about here, right? It would overshoot kind of like that. And it could wind up right here making a very different looking triangle. So that's what we say here as, well, beware of the ambiguous case. The triangle could be ambiguous. Notice how I'm saying could be, not 
always will be. It could be ambiguous. And when we say that language of ambiguous, we're saying, well, two very different looking triangles could emerge. Okay, so what's important to note here is we've, we've always told you beware of side-side angle. Well, this is why, right? It could be ambiguous. Sometimes the triangle is ambiguous and we have two very different looking triangles that could emerge, but sometimes it's not. So today I'm going to show you when it is versus when it is not. So let me just make a note of that. So sometimes the triangle is ambiguous, right? That means that two very different looking triangles could emerge, but sometimes it's not. Okay, so we'll see that distinction once we work through an example on the back. All right, so first up, find x in the triangle below. So if I look at what's marked, I'm going to block the x out of view. I have two angles and a side. So this is really angle, angle, side, right? That's really what I'm presented with here. All right, so in order to use the law of sines, I need an angle with a side opposite. So if I look at where the 25 is, great. There's a side opposite. But if I'm trying to solve for x, I need the angle opposite. Well, good thing that I have two angles marked, so it's very easy to find that third angle. I have to find that third angle first. So find that missing angle first. So if this is 70 and this is 25, then this would have to be 85. Okay. So what do I need to start with? Well, I'm looking for x. Let me zoom in just a little bit tighter. Okay, so I'm looking for x. So here is where x is. This is the angle opposite. So I'm going to say that sine 85 is 2x. That's my first ratio. Just as sine 25 is 2 Three. So again, I'm always looking for an angle with a side opposite. So I've built my proportion and now I can cross multiply. So I have x times sine 25 equals 3 times sine 85. And then from here, I'm going to divide away the sine 25. All right, so that's what I'm going to type into my calculator. Make sure we can all see it. Okay, so right here, I'm going to say 3 times sine 85. Okay, that gets me what's on top. I can just build off of that in my calculator and divide it by sine 25, like that. All right, so to four decimal spots, I would say that x is about... 7.0716. And that would be my final answer. That would be this measure right here. I'm not drawing things perfectly to scale, but I'm also <laughs> trying to not make it so out of scale. So it should be something that looks reasonable to the picture. All right, let's look at the flip side. All right, so here we're going to look at that second scenario. Here I'm saying we'll find the missing angle measure. We want to find x. Let me go to the little blurb I'm giving up above first. Okay, so here I'm going to really explain this more once we see it in example two, but just know that it will make more sense once we get to example two. All right, so in solving triangles by using the law of sines, where two sides and a non-included angle are given, so it's essentially saying side-side angle. So when you have side-side angle, 
it may be possible to have two different answers. This is known as the ambiguous case of the law of signs. So we know that there's the potential that we have two very different looking triangles. When we type in the inverse of sine, it's only gonna give us angles that are less than 90. But to find the possible obtuse angle, we wanna subtract this value from 180. So I'm giving you that little blurb, but it's gonna make more sense in just a moment once I go through example two. Okay, so here we go. So I'm giving you two pictures that look kind of similar, right? They both have sides that are five and six, but I've switched their position. And they both have an angle that's not included that's 45 degrees. All right, let me zoom in a little tighter so we can see that part A, nice and big. Okay. So here again, I recognize that this is side-side angle. I see side-side angle. Okay, where would that hinge be potentially? Well, it would be right here. And I don't know if this is gonna be ambiguous or not yet. Okay, so let's solve for X. So we know that here is the angle that we want. Here is its side opposite. So I'm gonna start with sine x is to the side opposite five. Just as here, 45, right, that angle, sine 45 is to six, the side opposite. So what makes this one a little different is that I'm solving for the angle and not a side. So I know that my inverse function is going to come into play in just a moment. So next I cross multiply. So I have 6 times sine x equals 5 times sine 45. Okay, and then from here I'm going to divide the 6 away. So I have sine x will be about. Okay, so let's crunch this right now. So I'm saying 5 times sine 45, and I'm going to divide it by 6. So I'm getting a ratio of about 0.5893. But now I want to solve for the angle measure. So I say, well, inverse of sine with that ratio, right? I'm just writing it in rounded to four decimal spots, the nearest 10,000. And that's going to pump out the angle measure as an approximation. So inverse of sine. If I want it to be really precise, I could build off of this stored answer in my calculator. I just told my calculator round to four spots, so that's how it's presenting on the screen. I could also build off the rounded intermediate steps and just type in 0.5893. I'm okay either way. So I'll build off the rounded intermediate steps as I model this for you. All right, so I hit enter, and here that angle measure would be 36.1073 degrees. So that's telling me that the measure of x is about 36.1073 degrees. Okay, so now the question I have to ask myself, right, if this measure is a little bit more than 36 degrees, is this going to be an ambiguous triangle? So let's just write that. Is this ambiguous? Is the triangle ambiguous? Well, let's check. So if it's ambiguous, the other option, let me write that out. The other option would be the, the supplement of 36.1073. So I'm going to take 180 and subtract 36.1073. 
slide that over a little bit. Okay, so 180 minus that previous answer. So the other option would be about 143.8927 degrees. So is that possible, right? Could this angle right here be 140.8927? Could it be that measure when this one is already 45? So if I look at those two measures together, I see, oh, that's not possible because I would be in excess of 180 degrees, right? I know that any triangle, the measures have to add to 180, so here they would not, right? They'd be in excess of 180. So this measure is too big to make a triangle. So too big to make a triangle. Triangle is not ambiguous. Let me make sure I spell that right. <laughs> ambiguous. All right, there we go. So in that first case, I'm showing you an example that is not ambiguous. And what I want you to really think about is why is that not ambiguous? What is it that's making it locked into a rigid position? Okay, and let's compare that to part B. So clearly I'm going to give you one that, that is not, and then I'm going to give you one that is, but we want to think why. Why is scenario B going to be ambiguous? All right, well, let's start our initial process. So let me slide it up to here. So again, we're recognizing that we see side-side angle, and we know that with side-side angle, that presents the possibility that we have an ambiguous triangle, right? And ambiguous just means that we have two very different triangles that could emerge with the same information. So we acknowledge that the hinge, that potential hinge is right here. Okay, so we're looking at always that hinge is in between the two marked sides. So here, I know that when I solve for x, I can say, well, sine x is to 6, just as sine 45 is to 5. Okay, so there's my initial proportion. I'm going to cross multiply. So I have 5 times sine x equals 6 times sine 45. Okay, from here I'm going to divide each side by 5. So I have sine x is about, let me type that into my calculator. Alright, so I'm saying 6 times sine 45, and I'm going to divide that by 5. So my ratio here is 0.8485. Okay, and if I want the angle then, now I take the inverse of sine with that ratio, 0.8485, and it's going to pump out the angle measure. So inverse of sine right there. 0.8485, so I'm building off of the rounded intermediate steps, and I'm getting 58.0489 degrees. So that's the measure of x. Measure of x is about 58.0489 degrees. Okay. But again, I want to think, well, is this ambiguous? And we kind of already know, yes, it is, because we're giving you one of each. So is the triangle ambiguous? Well, what would be the other option? Right, it would be the supplement of this measure right here. So I need to do 180 minus 
All right, so 180 minus 58.0489. So it's going to give me about 121.9511 degrees. All right, so let's look back at our visual and see if that makes sense here. So if I look over here, this angle, right, 58.0489, right, that looks right. That looks like the triangle that's drawn. Okay, but what about this option? Will this option work? 121.9511. Well, yes, that option would also work, right, because it's not in excess of 180, right? It's 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 big, right? It's an obtuse angle, but it's not going to be in excess of 180 total. So this one would work. So we're going to say this one could also be the measure of x. We have two possibilities. Now let me help you visualize y. Okay, so this one is ambiguous. Let me just write that first. Triangle is ambiguous. But the big question is, why do we see it here in that second example, but not in the first? So let me zoom out and look at the difference between the two. Right In both of these, we had angles that were 45 degrees, and we had sides that were 5 and 6. So what's different about the one on the top versus the one on the bottom? Right, What's the difference? So look at where that 45 is. So right here versus here, it's the only angle that we know concretely from the beginning. So if I look here at the 45, this side opposite is bigger than the other side. So if this is my hinge, this side right here is too big to swing into an alternate location. There's nowhere for it to go. Let me show you that with my compass. Let me make it real, real big. So if I show you with my compass, if I open it right here, where that's my hinge, and this is six units, right? It's too big to swing into a second location, right? There's no place for it to go and make a second triangle. But when I look at the second one, I see that opposite the 45 is a side that is smaller than the other given side right here. So it has room to swing into a second position. So let me show you that with my compass right here. So here, let me just open it to where X is. So you can see it kind of roughly where it would fall. So here I have it set to that width right there where it's five units. And if I go like this, you can see that it can swing into a second position right here. This would make another possible triangle. So let me draw that in right here. Okay, so here I see that second possibility. Okay, where I have some room, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to draw out those two separate triangles right down below. So here I want to remind you that that triangle is ambiguous when the side opposite the given angle is smaller than the other given side, right? It produces two very different looking triangles. Let me write that first and then I'm going to draw out the two examples. All right, so triangle is ambiguous with side-side angle. So it has to be side-side angle when the side opposite the given angle is smaller, underline that for lots of emphasis, smaller than the other given side. Right, creates two very different looking triangles. All right, and then I'm going to draw those out for you. So the first one just looked exactly as is. So let me sketch that out like so. 
And then the other one looked like this. All right, so again, I'm just looking at this big triangle. I'm drawing it here. Let me label the parts that were given. Here was six, here was five, here was 45, and here's the X. For this one, right, X becomes right there. Here's the 45, here's the six, and here's the five. Okay, so these, these are the parts that I know. And when I solve for X, that first option was 58.0489. So let me draw that in right here. So 58.0489, just like that, right there. So now, in my second case, right, it could be its supplement. And I want to explain that to you in a moment. I'm just going to write this right here, that this is 121.9511 degrees. Okay. So why is that working? Why is it producing this angle that's the supplement of this one? So if I go back to my big picture right here, let me show you in green. So right here where X is, this is 58.0489 degrees. And then we're showing how this side of five can swing into an alternate location. So right here, this is swinging right to here and this would then be five, right? Just like I drew it down below. So what's happening then is we have an isosceles triangle. And we know that for isosceles triangles, we know that their base angles are the same. So this angle of 58.0489 swings right to here, right? Those angles would be the same, they're base angles. So I'd have 58, 0 0.0489 degrees right here. Okay, but now that I'm trying to get to this angle right there, right, that's this one right here, I can see that together these form a linear pair. So the angle in this position right here has to be the supplement of this one right here. So that's really what we're doing when we're saying well, why don't you double check? Is the triangle ambiguous? What would the other option be? So we're looking for the supplement of what we've already solved for. And that would be the 121.9511. So this is again, the reason why we're looking for the supplement of what we solved for initially. All right, so then again, just in recap, right, we know that Triangles are not always ambiguous. If they're gonna be ambiguous, that means we're looking specifically at side-side angle. So two sides and a not included angle. So then what really makes it ambiguous is knowing that opposite the angle that we are given is a side right here that is smaller than the other given side. When it's smaller, it has a place to swing into a second location. This would be that second location right here. And then we have two very different looking triangles that could emerge, right? We can have this big one right here that I drew down below, or we could have this much smaller one right here that I've also drawn down below, okay? Um, and again, the reason that these end up being supplements or because I have an isosceles triangle right here, right? This is five, this is five. The base angles would match. And then the supplement of 58.0489 ends up being the 121.9511. All right, that's all I have for today. Have a good rest of your day.